Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Game Chefs, news that you can use. I'd like to uh, say to start off with that our couple weeks off here while we were in Florida was very, very nice. It was good to relax at our condo, just get away from things for a little bit, recharge because we've got a busy season coming up with conventions, with releases, the new games, the Christmas season in general is always a time where people are looking for things and we're gonna try to help you answer any questions you have. I'd like to start with uh, the video industry. We had the past couple weeks to work on looking at some new games on our Xbox and on our PS4 and on the Xbox really got into Space Hulk Tactics. Now, Space Hawk Tactics is a great release. It is a release of the old Games Workshop board game. And while it, the board game has been re-released a few times, I think twice if I remember correctly, the game itself is the most faithful recreation to the board game I've seen. Not only do you get that nice overhead, but you get some really stunning graphics. It is very smooth gameplay. Um, you enter the Space Hulk, and as you enter, or actually before you enter, you can customize your units. They have add-ons that you can customize your own colors, uh, what types of Marines. They have psychic combat, so the psychers, the librarians are there. This is all a very, very, very good game. I highly recommend Space Hulk Tactics, uh, especially on the Xbox. Uh, you guys that know me on the Xbox... Uh, send me a friend request. I will uh, we'll play a game. You can play cooperatively and competitively. One of the nice things is this is the first game that you're able to actually play as the Gene Stealers. Not just the Marines, but you can play as the Gene Stealers on the game. So look for that in the Xbox Microsoft Store if you're on the uh, Xbox platform. And again, uh, look me up, friend me, and we'll get into a couple games together. Highly recommend that. Moving on, uh, I'd like to move on to uh, Tabletop World. Um, in the Tabletop World, uh, the news I have for you, while there is a million things going on, one of the things I'd like to share with you is a game that's a little close to my heart. About 10, 12 years ago, I got into a game, and it wasn't new then, but it had been re-released. I got into a game of Condottier, and I have my copy here. This is Condottier, and this is my copy from Euro Games. And um, Condottier itself plays really well. It is a great, great go-to game. Our groups in the past have always pulled this game out when you weren't sure what to play. It plays in 30 minutes to an hour. Very, very easy game. Well, what I'd like to share with you, hang on a second while I move this, what I'd like to share with you is the game itself is being re-released. And it's being re-released by um, Z-Man Games. Uh, the release should be, it's my understanding, before the holidays here, right before Thanksgiving. So in November of this year, we should see the re-release of the Condottier. Uh, the new cards look nice. They're not the long cards like I have. They're standard card size. The board graphics are very, very good. They're still using the wooden block pieces, which is faithful to the original game. So I really, really like this game, and I highly recommend it. If you go to the Z-Man website or Asmodee website, you can look for... Uh, the upcoming preview of the game. They tell you a little bit about the release and look for it in your local game store. Go to your game shop owner and ask, hey, are you bringing this game in? Two to six players, highly recommend it. Again, Condottier, that's the way to go. Moving on from tabletop, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some company news. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Asmodee. Now, as we know, there's been some consolidation in the industry. We've seen a lot of companies buying up the smaller companies. We've seen a lot of the smaller companies that it's fiscally in their favor to sell off to a larger company, still retain some independent say on what they do on their games and that, and then turn around and... Uh, uh, progress forward in the industry. But by doing this, we're seeing a, you know, a, 
a couple companies, one, uh, one Esmoday, pull in all these smaller companies and take over their properties. A good example is we saw the exit this year in 2018 of Mayfair Games. And I was sad to see them go myself. I worked with uh, Mayfair Games, not for, I worked with Mayfair Games, um, doing demos with Alex when he first started with them back in 2006, 2007. And we would go to the different conventions. We would be at Origins. We would be at Gen Con. And, and we would set up the demo rooms and, and they would set these huge rooms up. They were always looking at new games. And I really, really liked how Mayfair was one, they weren't the only one, but they were one of the companies that were bringing the Euro games and some of the smaller independent developers as well as the large developers into the American market. And that was really nice. So I was kind of sad to see them go, but they did sell their Catan properties off to Asmodee earlier. And it's my understanding is, is everything they have went to them. So, um, but we know for a fact that they also um, took over, you know, Plaid Hat Games. Um, they're overseeing Z-Man Games. Well, the industry news I'd like to bring you, and I, I don't have any second party or third party confirmation of this, but it is my understanding from an insider that they're looking at getting into the miniatures game market. And with the miniatures game market, they are looking at acquiring a game section that has to do with tabletop miniatures. Several companies out there that come to mind, um, but they're looking at a West Coast company. And I can't really say any more right now, um, but there's a company on the West Coast that's talking about selling off their stuff. And it's my understanding the Asmo Day will be... Uh, are, look, are in talks with them or have approached them or they have approached Asthma Day, and it looks like there could be uh, another consolidation by next year at some point in time and Asthma Day can take over the miniatures game market. Um, we will see where this goes, how that happens, but um, in the meantime, until I can get some actual confirmation, I don't want to throw out any company names out there at the present time. So look for that in the future. They could be getting in back into the miniatures market. Um, the next news I'd like to bring you is from the Kickstarter, um, the Kickstarter side of things. And with the Kickstarter side of things, one of the things that we want to look at here is not is this just a new release or was this released or everybody's receiving this, but in the Kickstarter industry right now, there are have been a huge push right around Gen Con, just after Gen Con, when the major conventions start to slow down from the summer. And then we see uh, that they've done all their marketing there and they start to release their games. I think there are several small companies I can only concentrate on one at a time. But I also like to approach Kickstarter not from just a game point of view, but I like to approach it from an investment point of view. And I know some of you are a little sour on the investment uh, side. You go on your Facebook pages, you go on to different sites that have games and you were not able to get into a Kickstarter, something's released, you go to get into it and $80 game is $200. A $120 game is $400 on eBay or on Amazon. And all you have to do is wait those prices up. That's all you have to do. But for those of you that the opposite side that are buying two copies of a game or three copies of a game so you can make some money, I'm going to try to give you a little bit of insight. One of the companies I deal with in the past that their game releases have always garnered a premium on the resale market has been Seamine Games, um, Cool Minis or Not. And which was kind of redone as calling CMON instead of Cool Minis or not. CMON itself is uh, just released Project Elite. Now, Project Elite is a, uh, a new Kickstarter for them. As of yesterday, uh, when by the time that I even got to the site, which was pretty close to right away, um, they had had $56,000 and they were looking for $100,000. I did back Project Elite, and I suggest you go look at the game, watch the video, look at the gameplay, and especially read the comments. Project Elite is 
definitely going to be a great play. I think this is going to be a fun game. Um, in the past on this re-release, um, this moves very, very fast. Basically, you have a time limit when you start and you set a timer and you go and you have to roll dice and kill as much as you can and get to that objective, whatever your objective is. It's a very fun game. If you remember, we talked about Space Hulk Tactics earlier. With Project Elite, um, it, it's got that same kind of time mechanic. You have to think about things in a time limit. And that is kind of a, a it's not unique, but it's kind of a fun mechanic. It, it makes the game move a little bit. Now, in the past, you see games like this where the miniatures have to be extremely durable because you're moving fast, moving things off fast, and things can get broke. My understanding is they're, they're overcoming that with the uh, miniatures they're releasing for this. And the game comes with lots and lots and lots of stretch goals. So I would highly recommend looking all the way through those stretch goals and see. By the time I got done look, reading through some things yesterday, I did back this game. It was already over 100,000. As of this video cast, the game is at 306,940, and they only needed a $100,000 goal to make the game work. Let's talk a little bit about the investment side. This game is definitely going to make a difference. It reminds me of uh, a little bit on the monetary side of, of Game of Thrones, where you invest 150, 200 bucks. Uh, game of Thrones, on average, 150, 200 bucks garnered you if you sold quickly within the first two to three weeks, garnered you five to 800 bucks, uh, breaking about part all the stretch goals as an investment and selling the stuff off. Most CMON games do have a tendency to do that. You can sell it as one big unit, uh, pretty much double your money, um, or you can sell it uh, broken apart in different pieces, and you can get a lot more. I think, in my opinion, and this is totally opinion, you, you need to do your own due diligence and research. I think this is a game that you could easily put $150, $200 into, uh, on the on on the on the game itself, and easily pull in four or five hundred bucks on the investment side. So it's something to think about. For those of you that do not like that side of the game, remember, if you can't get into the Kickstarter, just wait it out. Wait it out. The prices should come down. Now, while I say should, didn't always come down on Rising Sun. Look at Gloomhaven. I mean, a lot of these games out there, some of the prices didn't go down. But just wait it out, and that's uh, and that's the best advice I could give to you if you can't get into the Kickstarter. Moving on to convention news, um, the last of our our big conventions, and when I say the last of our big conventions, there's only a few out there that people um, that have been going doing the convention circuit consider the really big conventions. They're talking about you know your Gen Cons, Eisen, um, you know, Adepticon, while the numbers in population may not be there, is huge for the tabletop industry. One of the best uh, tabletop miniatures conventions you can go to is Adepticon. Um, and while the numbers, I do believe, exceeded 6,000, 5,000, 6,000 last year. Could be wrong at that. Um, but the, uh, uh, that particular convention is, is very well attended by miniatures players. The upcoming convention is, when I say brand new, it started last year. It was put out by PAX, uh, you know, your, uh, your Penny Arcade people. Uh, PAX Unplugged, they call it. And this is a tabletop convention. Now, as far as a tabletop convention goes, uh, PAX Unplugged itself is, uh, is no video. And that's why they call it Unplugged. These are just tabletop games. It was well attended by the vendors last year, by the industry. Um, as far as sales for the vendors, it was my understanding in speaking with them that most of their sales came at the end of the day. They were a little surprised on that first day. Sales were light, but at the end of the day, everybody came back. They've introduced a new audience because of the location. They are getting people that are not used to going to conventions. Um, they're, they're getting people that like tabletop games, but they've never seen these kind of games before. So I think this is a great location. I think this is good for PAX. This is good for the industry. The timing is a little different. Uh, last year, it interfered with uh, 
Board Game Geek convention, and they've uh, fixed that this year. Um, the convention itself uh, on PAX Unplugged is running on uh, November 30th through December 2nd. Uh, I will be there, and I actually have a few interviews set up with a couple companies, um, and I'm looking forward to several things that are coming at uh, PAX Unplugged. Uh, the schedule is out. If you go to the PAX website now, uh, and you can just put in Google PAX Unplugged, uh, you can go to the website. You can look up. Their schedule is there. The three-day badges for PAX Unplugged, and they do have three-day badges, uh, not just individuals, um, are low. The sales are low, um, meaning that they're almost sold out on three-day badges. Um, but there's still plenty of availability to buy the individual badges, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, I have a conflict um, on uh, news scheduling, so I will not be there on Sunday, the last day, but I will be there on Friday and Saturday, and I do know that a couple of you there uh, I will be doing some gaming with. Um, several companies have uh, put up their um, schedules um, for gaming, for open gaming, uh, mostly in the evenings. Um, there's plenty of demos run, plenty of games run, plenty of tournaments run during the day, but there's a lot of evening play uh, Friday and Saturday. A uh, good example, I spoke with uh, Greg um, from Dust uh, USA about a month ago. I went in and, and got a chance to play at a local game store with him, and uh, Greg said that they are, um, their schedule is up. They're doing a Friday and Saturday uh, dust night, and uh, their dust day schedule is up. Uh, if you haven't played dust, uh, bing bing here, uh, if you haven't played dust, it's a great game. I uh, highly recommend that. Um, I think it is the, the one of the most upcoming games I've seen as far as a, as a miniatures game. It is not new. It's been around for 10 years, but Palo just keeps releasing. We had the Cthulhu releases last year. Uh, coming up at PAX, Dust is introducing the Imperial Japanese. Uh, and I know a lot of players that, miniatures players, that were not getting into Dust. Now with the release of the Imperial Japanese, we're going to see a whole new raft of players there. And I think this is just going to expand. And Dust USA has done a great job. Greg, Alicia, from Ohio. They're, they're south of me here. Um... Greg and Alicia have really pushed this, and it's just, I think their schedule gets stronger, and I don't know how they do this uh, with Dust USA, and they do a great job in the United States here for that. Um, so if you get a chance, PAX Unplugged is the way to go. Again, November 30th to December 2nd, it's in Philadelphia. Um, if you can go, I would suggest uh, looking now and buying your passes and going. If not, look for next year. And feel free to send any comments that you might have about PAX to me in the in below. And uh, if you're looking for me, pictures of any new releases that are coming. Several companies are having new releases, such as, as Dust USA uh, and Palo is doing at, at PAX Unplugged. If you're looking for anything, uh, let me know while I'm there. I'll try to take uh, either some shots or some interviews uh, with the companies about that. And I'll be bring, bringing back lots of stuff to show you from that convention. Uh, moving on, movies and TV. Um, in this category, what I'd like to uh, talk about is uh, is Disney. And uh, no, we're not going to talk about uh, Mickey Mouse. Um, what I'd like to talk to you about is uh, Disney's new streaming service. One of the things that they've been pulling back is they've been pulling back some of their Marvel properties, it, it appears, uh, and they're pushing their, their Star Wars. As you know, CBS All Access released... Uh, big with, uh, and while they were out, but they released big with their their Star Trek series, Star Trek Discovery. And we watched the subscription rate of CBS All Access just skyrocket when they, during the month before and the month after the release of uh, Star Trek Discovery. And I'm noticing since Disney is releasing their own streaming service, they're pushing really hard to have some go-to projects on there. And they're pulling in all of their properties for this um, that they can. Um, what they've done is the Mandalorian movie or the Boba Fett movie. Um, this movie looks like it's not going to take place, but they've replaced it and with a TV show called The Mandalorian. 
It's going to stream on Disney in 2019. Um, you can Google Disney Mandalorian and several new sites will tell you a lot more than I can give you in a short video about the Mandalorian, but this looks like a great series. It's a great, it's a great era and several things about Star Wars and several things about this particular series are going to be put into the upcoming movies. And so they're going to be referencing in the series some of the movies that they can, or some of the movie things that they can, and in the movies they start referencing this. So they're going to stick with canon and pull these together. So look up The Mandalorian, and with the Disney streaming service coming, I would look really hard at looking into this. Keep an eye on The Mandalorian. I think you're going to like this series. One thing that happened, we did get some news a few days ago, I cannot get any confirmation from Disney or anybody else, but on the filming of The Mandalorian, apparently it's been a halt, and the halt is because there was a theft on set. Apparently sometime during the evening, there was a theft on set. The theft itself, they stole some items. My understanding is they stole some uh, electronic cards that contained some sensitive material. And as you know, they don't like to release plot lines. Nobody in Hollywood does. Um, they don't want to spoil it for us. So apparently the theft has caused a stop to the production, but it should be a temporary stop. So you can look some of that news up online also. And uh, they're not coming, commenting about it because the law enforcement officials are involved. They won't comment on it particular investigation. So look for uh, look for more news on that. Um, talk to you a little bit about uh, PACs earlier. And so going back to uh, going back to some news releases or news headlines, you never know particularly when PAX is going to happen, the PAX conventions. And we're talking about PAX East right now. But I did get an email uh, pre-release from Penny Arcade, our, our, our fun folks at Penny Arcade here. I did get a re-release, uh, or not uh, a release of news. They are doing their uh, ticket sales, their advanced ticket sales, if you're a member of Penny Arcade. But they kind of put a little uh, blurb in there stating that PAX East is going to happen, let me read this here, on uh, March 28th to the 31st. And that's what they put in their site for their ticket release. Because uh, we can pre-purchase tickets uh, to be picked up at will call at a reduced part price. Um, you can do that if you go on to their Patreon, Penny Arcade Patreon, and, uh, and you can get a, a small discount on that. Um, so that is something to, uh, something to look for. Uh, look at, but if you're looking for those PAX East dates, another news blurb there, 28th to the 31st of 2019. Um, I did get some questions below, so I'll put it in the news. They're asking, what is being played? Well, with Game Chefs, we try to play a little bit of everything. To be honest with you, our go-to game right now has been with the, uh, with the group. We're doing a lot of dust, as you can see. Um, we are taking a look at some... Uh, some Blood and Plunder, which uh, is up here. Um, we've got some Blood and Plunder. These are all items that we all not only uh, talk about, uh, we carry in our online store. And um, the Blood and Plunder is something we're, we're looking at getting into. Dust, several of us, almost the entire club is, is into Dust right now. And it's growing. Uh, I think Greg and Alicia just got us hooked on that really good. The new one we're looking at uh, is Wild West Exodus. And Wild West Exodus, while it's been out for a while, uh, Wild West game, dystopian age, you can't beat it. The minis are fantastic. Um, you have several different boxes. You have several different blisters. Um, these are fantastic miniatures. You can buy these right now at a discount on our Game Chef store. You can also buy them at a great discount on Miniatures Market. And I highly recommend you go to your local game store and talk to them about it also. Wild West Exodus, great game to get into. It's one of the ones we're looking at for our holiday schedule. 
and that is a game that is going to be happening for us. So look for Wild West Exodus. So you ask what's going on the table. These are the things that we're doing. Now we're down to the end of our cast here, and uh, it's time for our weather report. Now when it comes to our weather report, we're not talking about the sunny outdoors here. Um, while that looks sunny, it's only about 30 degrees out. Um, the weather report is, is weather. Whether the game is good, whether the game is bad, whether the game is okay, whether you should buy the game, whether you shouldn't buy the game. So on our weather report today, we're going to talk a little bit about a new release. Um, the new release that we're talking about is the uh, is Games Workshops just released Speed Freaks. And if you're not sure what Speed Freaks is, it's a little bit like Dark Future meets Gorka Morka. Speed Freaks, we're excited about it. It's a race game. All of us Gaslands fans, and if you're not sure about Gaslands, look up some of our news in the past. But uh, Speed Freaks is an orc racing game. And the way this plays, the mechanics are not new in any way, but the way this plays is a lot of fun. So racing games are in. It's wintertime. Racing games are in, and we're seeing the return. Games Workshop, no different. You have orc bikes and an orc buggy versus orc bikes and an orc buggy. And Games Workshop is releasing more and more vehicles as we speak. The same way they did with Warhammer, Warhammer Underworlds, when they did Shade Spire. After they did Shade Spire, they released a month, within a month, they released a new faction. Uh, within a few weeks, a new faction. Within a month, a couple factions. Right after the first of the year, another couple factions. They're doing the same thing with Speed Freaks. They released the game. It's a big game. And when I said earlier, it's a, sort of like Dark Future meets Gorka Morka. I don't know if you remember and I'm pretty sure this would have been in the 80s. They released a big box game called Dark Future. And it was a racing game. And you had a nice little road. It was a lot very Mad Max oriented. Um, and you raced. And as you raced down the road, um, you picked up the road behind you and put it in front of you. Um, so it kept it on the table that way. Very, very, very unique mechanic for the 80s. Very fun. Speed Freaks plays the same way as you're racing down the board. You get to a certain board, the board behind you gets picked up, you slide it down the table, and you put that on in front of you. It has very similar to mechanics to most of their games, but it's not a one hit and you're out. So you don't have to worry about your bike going up and, and getting taken out immediately. While it can happen, um, your buggy is just not going to happen. They take some damage, you're going to be around for a while. The racing mechanic part of this is good. So you can try different tactics. You can go for speed and just get out of there. If you don't want to go for speed, you can both head, you know, butt heads all the way in. While we see it as a two-player game, we see a lot of mechanics at conventions coming for a lot of multiplayer on this. Uh, it's been discussed with groups. It's been discussed online as to a convention, how to put 10, 12 bikes into this, uh, or buggies, I'm sorry, into this. The box itself comes with a buggy and three bikes for one side and a buggy and three bikes for the other side. The releases are all buggies, but you can play whatever you want. Several, several streamers have things out there, videos out there that you can watch. Um, check Beast of War. Beast of War has a, a very, very good uh, uh, videos on that. Um, I know uh, Adam from... Uh, Tabletop Minions has talked about Speed Freaks. Um, I highly recommend looking into that. So when we talk about a Raiden, this is a weather game. Whether it's good or not, let's talk a little bit about the game itself. Um, let's talk about what the game is. It's a racing and fighting game, whether that's good or bad. I think for this time, Gaslands has really hit the, the tabletop miniatures market. And I think to have some sort of an entry-level game that everything is there, you don't have to kit bash anything, um, I think that's good. So whether that's good or bad, I think that's good. Let's talk about the gameplay itself. The fact that you can keep the board static and just race around the boards, or whether you can move the board and just make a continuous race or getaway, I, is that mechanic good or bad? I, I think... 
that is a great mechanic. I, I think that it gives you some expandability to use in a game that you don't normally get because you're stuck in one spot. So I think wh whether that's good or bad, I think that's really good. Um, last but not least, long-term playability. I think because they started with the orcs, I think they'll stick with the orcs, but I don't see a reason why they wouldn't next year maybe come out with something different. Maybe we'll see another race. Maybe we'll see some, some dwarf machines out there racing next year. Um, maybe we'll see a little bit of a, of a Necron jet bike or something out there that, you know, Eldar jet bike. Maybe we'll see something else come out. And I think that would be next year. I'm not sure that they'll make this a standalone game if it sells well. And my understanding is well received in the market. So let's talk about the ratings. You have clear, I'm sorry, you have sunny, you have clear, you have hazy, you have rainy, you have stormy. Okay. Those are our ratings, good to bad, all the way down. I give this a sunny. This looks like a really, really, really good entry-level racing and fighting game. Everything is included in the box that you need. You don't have to buy anything extra. But if you have a group, you play with four or six guys. If somebody bought the box, one or two people bought a box, and then the other two people just went and bought the individual cars, you're all set. So definitely an easy way to get in. The models are fantastic. They are fantastic. So again, rating wise, I give this a sunny, which is our top rating. So Speed Freaks, look for it. Other than that, this video is going on about 30, it's over 30 minutes. So we're gonna close it down here. Leave your comments below. You guys ask about our Patreon. Our Patreon is coming in December. Look for our Patreon. Also look for a few more extra videos from us from the convention. We will not be selling our videos and our newscasts off uh, unless we absolutely have to, um, which shouldn't happen. Uh, so look for those. And other than that, I look forward to seeing you guys at the conventions. I look forward to seeing you across the table. And have a good day. And thank you for visiting the news that you can use. Take care.